Welcome back to Red Hood and the Outlaws from the New 52 right here at Comic Storian. At this channel, we like to catch you up in your favorite comic book storylines by giving you a poor man's version of an audio book. I read it to you in a narrative fashion, sometimes acting out voices. And if you enjoy that kind of thing, please consider subscribing and giving us a like and coming back to the channel. Today, we're going to be starting off Volume 2 of Red Hood and the Outlaws from the New 52. At this point in the timeline, Jason is officially an anti-hero who is against the Bat family but he kind of works with them. And during this storyline, Jason has teamed up with Starfire and Arsenal to create the Outlaws. The Outlaws are off trying to avenge the death of Jason's teachers, but they're going to be a little distracted today. This takes place during the Court of the Owl event in comics, which means that Gotham during these storylines is getting overrun by the Court of the Owls. I'll link that storyline down below and you can see how Batman handled it. But this is basically how Jason got involved for an issue. Not long ago in Hong Kong, Jason Todd stands atop the coffin of the crime lord asking if he's got everyone's attention. The room full of mobsters silently stare as Jason takes out the all blade from the corpse, telling them, good, I'll keep it simple. All of you represent the seven crime families of Hong Kong. I don't care how much money you have or honestly how you make it, but starting today, I get 10%. Questions? When he finishes, an old woman shouts, Someone! Everyone! Kill this little snot punk! And after that, well, everyone died. Starfire laughs, stating that she thought she had a temper. And Roy wipes a tear, stating, You have some of the best stories, Jason. So you killed Susie Sue's entire crime family, and that's why she has it out for you? Jason goes on telling him, No, well, not really. After that, family after family came to try and claim the power that I had gained. They all met the same fate as the first groups, and that's when Miss Sue came into town. On my way out of town, I killed everyone in her gang except for Susie and her father. Was it my way of trying to make amends with Hong Kong for all the trouble I caused? Maybe. But of course, I should have offed the two of them as well. I was just hoping that they'd see the light, but nope. After killing everyone on their gang, they just wanted to uh, get revenge on me, which is why we're in Gotham. After my run-in with Susie and shooting her, Susie's father shipped her to one of the best hospitals for gunshot wounds. Now she's alive and has taken the entire children's ward of Gotham Hospital hostage. She said that I have two hours to turn myself into her or she's going to kill every kid there. That was an hour and 46 minutes ago, guys. Starfire says the ship scanned the building and there are roughly two dozen heavily armed men inside, all with their weapons trained on the innocent children. Jason tells her not to worry. We didn't come here for nothing. A few moments later, inside of the hospital, the elevator door dings for the floor where the children are, and Roy walks out asking if this is the cosmetic surgery ward. I can't tell in this light, and I really hate my nose. One of the guards points their gun at him, asking, Did you really think that you'd take us on by yourself? Roy snickers as he looks towards the window, and everyone else looks, and they see Starfire floating there. One of the men shouts, The boss lady didn't say nothing about no aliens! Starfire holds out her hand, and with a fiery burst of energy, the window shatters and the men turn into ash. She steps in, asking, Was that too much? And Roy tells her, No way! Those guys are here to kill a hospital full of children. They got what they deserve. While Roy and Starfire begin evacuating, Jason makes his way to the floor where Susie is staying, and he notices as the elevator doors open that there's nobody there. He waits for a moment to see if there's any movement, but then he hears screaming from up above. He sighs, Really? And then Susie comes crashing down through the elevator roof, snapping the support cable. She shouts, asking, Do you think that your mask is going to keep your head from being crushed? Jason asks, What's the plan here? We both fall down and go splat. And Susie yells that she has 600 pounds of white hot rage. I will survive this, even if you won't. As the elevator falls, it suddenly stops. And up above, Starfire holds onto the cable, saying that she trusts that she was able to stop the descent in time. Susie charges out of the elevator with Jason latched onto her, yelling, It don't end like this! It doesn't end until you're dead! Jason plants his feet to the ground, and using Susie's momentum, he flips her over onto his back, quickly pressing his gun to her head. He tells her that this is her chance. She needs to accept that what happened in the past is the past. Let it go. Susie says never. Not for a second. As long as she is still breathing, she will come back bigger and badder each time. She won't stop ever. So then Jason tells her that he respects her decision, and he pulls the trigger. Once everyone meets back up on the roof, Roy asks, Seriously? That's it? We came, saved the kids and the doctors, and we just leave? This place used to be your old haunt, man. You're not even going to show us around Gotham? Jason tells him, No. Now get back in the damn ship. 
As the team takes off, a distress signal comes out of the Batcave and Alfred's face appears on the screen. Jason gets ready to end the transmission, but Alfred states that tonight, the Court of the Owls have sent their assassins to kill nearly 40 people across the city. The Court's targets are all of Gotham's leader, the people who shaped the city. I have uploaded a list of the target's names here. The Court's assassins, the Talons, are ready in a route to their targets. They are highly trained killers with extraordinary regenerative abilities. I will keep this line to the cave open as long as I can manage. Roy tells him that from what it seems like on this call that they intercepted, a lot of the Bat Buddies already have this covered. But before the line is cut, Timothy Drake says that he has intel that they have an eavesdropper. Hey, if you could hear us, Jason, we could use your hand. Starfire asks Jason if he knows this boy, and after a few moments of silence, Jason tells her, Yeah, I do. Starfire quietly asks Roy if he's staying or leaving, and Roy says, You've got to be kidding. No way in hell Jason is going to stick his neck out for... But Jason stands up at the control, stating, The information dump that Alfred sent out. Look through for a person of interest who hasn't been covered by the Bat Mites. Roy sighs, sitting down, and he scans through the files. And he says, There's one in Chinatown that they aren't covering. Victor Freeze. Cool. A short while later, over in Chinatown, Starfire kicks her legs as she lays across a stone gargoyle, stating that she doesn't understand. If you hate Batman so much, Jason, why are you helping him? Jason tells her that this isn't about him. It's about a city under siege by a group of maniacs. It isn't Gotham's fault that Batman happens to live here. Starfire then smiles, stating that she will say this about the man's work. It is a thing of beauty, though it cannot be healthy for those who live below. The three look at the giant pillars of ice, and Jason says, Yeah, it's gonna be fun. He leaps off of the ledge with Starfire asking where is he going, and Roy stops her stating, He's fine, just watch. Jason fires his grappling gun, swinging down safely onto the ice while Roy and Starfire follow. Jason tells them that they need to get as many people out of here as possible. He'll handle Freeze. Roy then asks, shouldn't they all be going together? And Jason says, no, because we're not together. I'm here on family business. You just tagged along. Now go! He starts to make his way through the frozen city, asking himself, why is he doing this? He's supposed to be taking Batman out, not helping his cause. If it wasn't for the ice castle here, he'd think this whole thing was a setup to get him arrested or... As Jason gets closer, he hears Free shout out, How dare you raise your hand on me? And Jason says, Nope, not a setup. He climbs through the opening to see Freeze and the assassin fighting, and the assassin yelling, No, it is you who will die tonight, now that you've chosen to no longer serve the Court of the Owls. Jason jumps between the two of them, firing his gun, stating, I don't really care who did what or why, but this ends now. Free shouts, I do not need your help. Allow me to make my point in a way you will understand. Jason holds out his gun and his hand begins to freeze with ice as it begins to travel up his arm. He yells out in pain, stating, I'm here to help you, damn it! And he bashes Freeze with a frozen arm. Freeze groans, telling him, Apparently you're helping the wrong person! The assassin got away! Jason looks back to see the assassin escaping through the window and he sighs, Ah, all right, be right back. But if you make me track you down, I'm gonna kill you myself. He follows through the window after the assassin, and as he catches up, he tells him that this won't take but a moment. I just have to kill you and get back to Mr. Freeze. The Talon assassin spins back, grabbing onto Jason, telling him that it's too late, and the two come crashing down onto the decorative dragon float. The assassin tells him that many have served the Gord of the Owls, and they've had the honor of giving their lives as a Talon, whether they have died in the line of duty or retired after their all-too-brief tenure. On this night alone, we have risen again to smite our master's enemies. Just then, the assassin lifts his arm into the air, holding out a knife and bringing it down, chipping away at Jason's mask. He then goes in for a second strike, but an arrow whizzes by shooting through the assassin's hands. He shouts out in pain, asking, Who is foolish enough to attempt a rescue? Jason swings his frozen arm, cracking the assassin, stating, The guy has to. He's the designated driver. The assassin quickly jumps back, retreating as Roy and Starfire land, and Roy asks if they're going after him. Jason shouts, No! I've got it! If you're both done with the evacuation, then deal with this freezing at the source. Jason begins to follow the assassin, and Roy lets loose another flame arrow melting Jason's hand. And Jason tells him, right, thanks. Jason quickly catches back up to the assassin, and as he looks around, he notices certain things. Things that he is passing, like the billboard for Haley's Circus. The way the assassin moves, it's like he carries himself like a acrobat. The flourish, the flare, he was an acrobat. As the assassin stumbles into his landing, Jason asks if this empty lot has meaning to him, and the assassin yells back, Do not speak as if we know each other. Jason tells him, Come on, you led me here. Why? 
This was the old circus, and I'm gonna take a guess and say you ran away from home and joined the circus because you believed the line that they fed every 10-year-old boy. That it's all magic and sunshine and anything is possible. What happened here? What did the court make you do here? What made a young circus performer sign his body and soul to the Court of the Owls? As Jason steps forward, the assassin steps back in his own defense, stating, No, not my soul, but my body, yes. It has become a mockery upon my return to life. Jason laughs, telling him, You're preaching to the choir, buddy. I myself have been to the other side and back. After a few moments, the assassin falls to his knees, taking off his mask. My name is Yao Long. This is my face. As a child, I was forged into a weapon. My every thought and deed dictated by the Court of the Owls. Even my death came in a time and place of their choosing. This time, I want a say in my execution. Jason also takes off his helmet, telling him, We're more alike than you realize. I was dead once. I get it. Starting over is scary as hell. Zhao tells him that he doesn't want to start again. He wants to end this life on his own terms. Surely he can understand that. So Jason holds up his gun to Zhao's head, and Zhao smiles. Please. A short while later, atop of the GCPD, Batgirl stands there stating, Took out my talent and dragged her up over here. Check. Replace the owl signal with the bat signal. Check. What to do now? A voice then yells at her, Hey, nice legs! Batgirl turns back glaring, telling him, You have two seconds to convince me not to throw you off this rooftop. As Jason leans back on the railing, Batgirl notices a knocked out Mr. Freeze and asks if he... Jason says, What? Can't be nice every once in a while? She tells him that this doesn't absolve him from every insane act that he committed. If she ever sees him again, he'll be finding himself in a cell right next to Freeze. Jason gets up, jumping over the ledge, telling her, Better bats have tried. Speaking of, if Bruce survives the night, tell him he's welcome. That is how Jason was involved in the Court of the Owls. Now, like I said, this is a big event that happened in Batman. It's kind of famous in the Batman storylines for the New 52. I'm going to link the original run we did for that down below, along with Night of the Owls, or Night of the Court of the Owls. It was something along those lines. It was the sequel. That's what this is doing right now. Um, but if you want to know what's going to happen with uh, Jason, Roy, and uh, Starfire, and the unnamed, untitled, and the all cast, and everything that happened with that, and the Susie Sue stuff, stick around. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscription button. And don't forget to hit that like button. I'll see you next time right here.